In the first chapter, the day I discovered my wife's affair, Jack's ordinary life is shattered by a single discovery, his wife's infidelity with his best friend. This chapter plunges you into the heart of his turmoil, capturing the raw emotion of betrayal. As Jack struggles with the fallout, questions about trust and love surface. How will he confront his wife and best friend? Each word in this chapter pulls you deeper into Jack's world, setting the stage for a story of love, betrayal and the quest for truth. The cliffhanger ending leaves you desperate to know what happens next in this gripping tale. Chapter 1. The Day I Discovered My Wife's Affair I never thought I'd be the one to tell a story like this, but here we are. It's strange, really, how life can flip on its head in the blink of an eye. I'm Jack, by the way, just your average guy living in a small town where everyone knows everyone else's business, or so I thought. It was a Tuesday, just an ordinary day, you know. I'd been out in the workshop since dawn, the smell of sawdust and varnish, as familiar as my own skin. Carpentry's been my life for as long as I can remember. It's honest work, shaping wood into something beautiful or functional. There's something comforting in that, in the predictability of it. Emma, my wife, she'd already left for work when I got back to the house. She works at the local bank, has done for years. We met right here in this town at the annual summer fair. I still remember how her eyes sparkled when she laughed. It was like being struck by lightning, that feeling. We were married within a year, that day I remember walking into our kitchen, the tiles cool under my boots, and there it was, her phone buzzing and lighting up on the table. Now I'm not the suspicious type, never have been, but something about that moment felt like a sledgehammer to the gut. Call it intuition, a sixth sense, whatever, I just knew something was off. I stared at that phone like it was a grenade about to go off, and then I did something I'd never done before. I picked it up. I still don't know if it was the right thing to do, but in that moment it felt necessary. The messages were from Tom. Tom's been my best mate since we were kids, throwing rocks into the creek and racing our bikes down the dirt tracks. He's the last person I would have suspected of. Well, you know. Reading those messages, it was like watching a car crash in slow motion. I couldn't look away. Each word was a betrayal, a stab straight to the heart. They talked about meeting up, about how they had to be careful not to get caught. It was clear as day, my wife, my Emma, was having an affair with my best friend. I felt this, this rage, this unbelievable anger boiling up inside me, but it was tangled up with this profound sense of loss, like the ground had been yanked out from under my feet. Emma and I, we'd had our ups and downs, sure, who hasn't, but I thought we were solid unbreakable. I thought she was happy. I must have sat at that kitchen table for hours, those messages replaying in my head like a broken record. When Emma walked through that door, her smile vanished the second she saw her phone in my hand. I've never seen someone's face change so fast. We had it out right then and there. She cried, said it was a mistake, that it didn't mean anything. But how can something like that not mean anything? How can you throw away years of love and trust on a whim? I've always believed in honesty, in facing things head on. So I told her I knew. I told her about the messages, about how utterly destroyed I felt. And you know what she did? She begged for a second chance, said she'd do anything to make it right. I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to scream, to tell her it was over, to throw her out then and there. But another part of me, a part I didn't even recognise, wondered if we could get past it. The house felt too small that night, the silence too heavy. I ended up walking out, wandering the streets without any real direction, and that's when I saw him, Tom, coming out of the pub, laughing at something on his phone. The sight of him, so carefree and oblivious, it was like a punch to the gut. I wanted answers, needed to understand why. So I followed him in. The pub was noisy, full of the usual crowd, but it all faded into the background. It was just me and Tom and the truth hanging between us. But just as I was about to confront him, to demand he look me in the eye and explain himself, I saw it. A figure in the shadows, 
watching me with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. Who was this person and what did they want with me? And that's where I'll leave you for now. You see, this story, my story, it's only just begun. There are twists and turns you won't see coming, but one thing's for certain, my life will never be the same again.